Laura, I mean, you and I have both been in journalism for many years, as has our next guest. And this week, the Asbury Park Press, which is a Monmouth and Ocean County based newspaper, fired a longtime photographer who allegedly used a misogynistic and offensive caption in a photo that appeared in their online edition last Sunday. So joining us to talk about this is longtime radio and TV reporter and anchor in New York City, now owner of guest placement and media coaching company, Context Media. He's also a media expert and author. Please welcome Frank Topola to the show. Hi, Frank. Good morning. Good morning to you. I want I want to remind uh, Laura Jones, especially that yesterday marked the 25th anniversary of the launch of News 12 New Jersey. And all she, right, we are all alumni. She and I were there right. from the beginning, so I know Laura Jones 25 years. Yesterday, we're going wow. on next 25 years, Laura. I know, and we haven't aged. You no. you always no. have theme music, theme music when I walk through. Frank is going to talk, but he can also sing. He can sing, yeah. and he would sing me and Mrs. Jones. I, good time, good times. <laughs> all, yes, all of that. We could tell those stories forever. But so good to join you ladies this morning. Good morning to you. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. So, Frank, this is a wild story. This caption <laughs> under a photo of an Orthodox Jewish nurse preparing a vaccine, and we have to really censor what actually went out, but it was, a, quote, an F the F hot nurse. Yeah. And then uh, a, a very inappropriate term for a, a Jewish woman. I, I mean, oh, how, how does that happen? It's mind boggling. Well, you just did a story a moment ago about the Gothel's Bridge, you know? Well, yes. With checks and balances along the way. Let me get this out of the way right off the bat. What this gentleman did was reprehensible, wrong, uh, you know, and, and there's no excuse for it. You know, period, full stop, done, all right? But it's indicative of a larger problem, I believe, and that larger problem is a lot of these local newspapers and a lot of news organizations in general are cutting back. Now, I can go in a time machine and tell you years ago when I started in the news business, nothing got on the air unless it was reviewed by two or three people along the way. Now, when you look at this story, you find out that, you know, the, first of all, the reporter is self-publishing. He's doing it late at night. Nobody, and, and according to the editor, uh, on, on the review of a limited staff. And that is really the issue. We saw it uh, recently at, um, at uh, New York One News where they cut back a whole bunch of people at the CBS radio network where they got rid of all these people, all this experience that these, these men and women brought. They got rid of them and brought in younger people and that's fine. But you know, when you don't have the old gray beard in the newsroom checking everything out. This is how things like this happen. And unfortunately, the, the, the issue is not so much the gentleman who did it, the issue is what's happening in the news industry. Uh, you absolutely, Frank. So it's definitely speaking to something that I, again, I think we've all experienced even, you know, where we have these cutbacks and, um, you know, yes, nothing wrong with giving a, a young reporter, a young producer, young writer, you know, some, uh, early experience, but but they need someone to guide them. I mean, you know, just because it only costs, you know, a fraction uh, of what it used to to hire them or, or you know, for uh, for us in, in TV and broadcasting, you know, to, to hand them a, a cell phone and call them an MMJ and say, okay, well, you know, that position now only, you know, in the, the New York metro area is only worth $35,000 a year. Uh, you know, it's really causing, uh, hurting journalism. And it may be part of the reason why people don't trust journalists anymore. Well, what I feel, what I find most troubling about this whole incident was that it was up there for 14 hours. I mean, it wasn't for a half hour and somebody caught it. It was up there for 14 hours. Now, I don't want to get pile on the Asbury Park Press, but you know, somebody did not see that for 14 hours. I'll go back again into this time machine. When I worked uh, at WNBC radio years ago, it was a long table with these distinguished news men and women. You know, they had been in the business for years and at the head of the table was Bill Maher Sr., the comedian's father. He worked in radio and nothing got on the air until Bill looked at it. And that was the last stop before it happened. You're absolutely right. These MMJs, these these radio reporters going out there who are self-publishing, you know, they, it's no knock against them, but they may not have the experience. We all make mistakes along the way, but the thing in radio and television and even in print um, up until recently was there was always somebody there watching what was going on. And now we're finding out that with regard to this incident at the Asbury Park Press, no one was really watching. Right. And, and 
Frank, you and I have had this conversation and others uh, at other points throughout our career. It's about the depth of knowledge that you have and perspective coming to stories. And just because you've got a cell phone and you can, you know, set it up and do something live doesn't mean you should be. Because especially in this day and age with COVID and with so much misinformation, you want to know where am I going to go for the accurate information? What am I going to because people are going to make mistakes. I make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes. But you have people who you trust, who have that depth of knowledge, who have other people uh, uh, making sure that it is accurate. And I, it's very discouraging because I've got to really hunt and find where am I going to find the most accurate information? Where am I going to find somebody giving me and, and holding themselves accountable as well? Well, but I think you, you make a wonderful point, Laura, you do. And I think the great Morley Safer, the late Morley Safer said it best. He said, I will trust the citizen journalist when I trust the citizen surgeon. You know, it's not everybody can be a journalist. You went to journalism school. I did as well. You understand how it works. You, you're going to make mistakes, especially when you're a younger reporter. I did it myself. But I would say 99% of those mistakes were caught before they went on the air. I didn't look foolish. The newspaper or the radio or TV station didn't look foolish. So this is not so much about this one guy who made a mistake. This is more about what's happening in the industry. Part of what I do is I, I help uh, doctors, lawyers, cybersecurity experts, and so on. I book them on stations in all the major markets and on the networks. And I must tell you, the vast majority of these reporters are doing six to 10 jobs at once. Yes. They go out, they have to tweet, they have to post, they have to do a little Facebook thing, they have to write the story, they have to write the web story, they have to edit the video, they have to voice track it in their cars. You know, when you're not experienced and you don't know how to manage your time, especially when you start off, one of two things happens. You make a mistake or you get burnt out. Absolutely. Absolutely, Frank. And, and you know, again, just to kind of wrap things back up to, to where we started, uh, you know, News 12, New Jersey, uh, of which, again, we are all alum. I, I was there uh, briefly at the end of Laura's term there, and then I was there for another seven years uh, beyond that even as well. Uh, but again, similar to what you were just saying, you know, it, it, we were at that getting to that point where, you know, everybody wore multiple hats. Um, but it has been uh, 25 years. Yes. <laughs> Look at the picture. <laughs> um, what, was, uh, what was your experience there, Frank? Well, you know, uh, I, first of all, News 12 in New Jersey was absolutely terrific. It was one of my, probably my most favorite job. Uh, I write about it in my book. I was surrounded. Here we are, 135 people, all in our 30s, 20s, and 40s launching this wonderful News 12 New Jersey operation out of Edison, New Jersey. All of us eager, young, all of us good looking. You know what I mean? <laughs> we were all in the prime of our lives and we actually had a very good news operation. You're seeing a photograph right there of myself and, and Carla Roth, who Laura knows as well. Yeah. But it was just a wonderful time. It really was magical. It was before the internet and people actually watched morning television on a regular basis. They enjoyed it. They knew who the personalities were. It wasn't so much fragmentation. There were a few stations that really people enjoyed in News 12 New Jersey was one of them. I, you could tell Laura, we used to go out to uh, lunch or you'd go out with your family and people would be pointing and, and you know smiling and buying you drinks because you were their friends. I mean, just yeah. a wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful experience. Really a wonderful experience and I enjoyed it thoroughly. I can explain I, I, that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I remember this story. You want the story behind this story? The they, story of me holding in the Snuggie and the, and the ice storm. Yeah, I, no, I volunteered for that. Sometimes no. you volunteer for stories, especially like Superstorm Standy in particular, because the power was on there. Oh no, but that was a, that was a, a major snowstorm. And uh, that was probably like at four o'clock in the morning. And I had my Snuggie on and was, you know, trying to keep, uh, trying to keep warm and having fun. And I had my yard stick as well. And that's the thing. There's there are like 40 people in this industry. We joke about, you know, there are 40 people. And ultimately we kind of end up crossing paths again. And we all know one another. And Frank, you have a book. I do. Yeah. The, uh, the book is, is uh, all uh, my 38 years in radio and television covering news in and around New York City. I worked uh, in radio first for the first 15 years. I did news on the Soupy Sales radio show on WNBC. <laughs> I, I filled in for Imus uh, on the Imus show and Howard Stern, and I worked uh, at, 
at uh, WCBS radio before getting into television. There's News 12 and that, Channel 9 for many years, where it was a reporter and anchor, Wall Street Journal Radio Network. Look, you just see the product that's on the air. But you and I and Laura, everybody knows who's in this industry, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes is really what's hilarious. And that's what this book is about. All the funny stories from my 38 years of covering news in and around New York City. Oh, by the way. And amazingly, you're only 39 years old. So that's pretty I impressive. I started, <laughs> right? when I, was, I was started when I was one. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I was a right. baby. That, that, that's the point. It's, it's in our blood to do these yeah. things. And we yeah. started from, from right, yeah. right away. I've had, friends, I've had friends who try to get out of the industry. You can't. Once you've done news, you cannot get out of the industry. It's in your blood. And, and all, all of us know that. You just simply cannot get it out of your system. It's a noble profession. This gentleman, getting back to what we were talking about a moment ago, made a mistake. He will recover. He'll work in the industry again. But, you know, I just wish they'd invest more in print. They, they would invest more in radio and television. We saw iHeart Radio lay off hundreds of people. You know, in, in, in news especially, it's a very noble profession. And I, I mean, people say, do you have any regrets? My only regret is I can't go into a time machine, go back and do it all over again. Because that's yeah. how much <laughs> it really is a lot of fun. Frank Zappola, thank you so much. One more time, the title of your book. It's shocked as in shocking. It shocked even us. And you can get it at it shocked even us dot com. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us once again, Frank, on this Friday morning. We always appreciate your insights and opinions, and uh, we appreciate your time as well. Thank you so much, Frank. Same here. My pleasure. <laughs>